What a delightful surprise the first Shining Force had in store for me. Well, it's properly known as Shining Force the Legacy of Great Intention, and I must say that is one epic name. Sounds like the title of some classic novel, far better than the literal translation The Legacy of the Gods. Anyhow, I didn't know what type of RPG this was until I recently streamed its sister game, Shining in the Darkness, which was developed at the same time, and wanted to continue with the series. Turns out, Shining Force switches up genres to a tactical RPG in the vein of Fire Emblem. It's kind of Fire Emblem light, in fact. There's less depth to the combat in that not nearly as many stats are revealed to the player, so you're not constantly doing damage calcs, you're more going by feel. To accommodate this looser, more casual playstyle, there's no permadeath. Instead, you're encouraged to use riskier strategies since the only unit you must keep alive is the hero character, Max. The rest, let them die if it means you'll finish a map quicker. It's a nice change of pace from Fire Emblem. By the way, I compare to FE because Shining Force came out only two years later and was itself one of, if not the earliest TRPGs released in the US. Of course, Genesis players back then likely wouldn't have known about Fire Emblem at the time a Japan-only series, so for them, Shining Force may be the classic original TRPG to compare to. I've played the first Fire Emblem already though, and a lot of its DNA runs in Shining Force's veins, despite what the game's lead developer has claimed. <laughs> Shining Force does set itself apart, however, by upping the pace of battles with a system where units move in order according to their speed, and a little RNG, rather than each player moving their whole army at once. It's unit turn-based rather than player turn-based, in other words, and after recently playing similar games like Triangle Strategy, I've learned that's a big enough difference to qualify each style as its own TRPG subgenre. To make up for its relative simplicity, Shining Force leans heavily on randomness in most aspects of combat. There's no double attacks based on speed, instead each unit has a small chance to crit, double attack, or counter enemy attacks. That's right, no auto counter here, but the RNG based level ups straight from Fire Emblem. Similar to that series, in Shining Force you'll want to stick to one core party for most of the game. I was happy to use online guides to make sure I didn't miss any recruitments, and whenever I got a new character I liked, I'd see if they were generally considered worthwhile before making them a permanent member of my force. I'd love to have the time to take multiple playthroughs figuring this stuff out on my own, but for a single campaign, this is the way to go. The units manage a kind of charm and likability due to the gorgeous sprite art, though most of the late game newcomers don't get much characterization. Most units are able to promote, however, and for free no less. May reaches level 10? Congrats, you can give her access to stronger classes of weapons and much better stat increases on level ups, all at the cost of half her stats. That sounds bad, but units quickly make up for it. I didn't see much of a reason to wait to promote beyond level 15 or so. Compared to Fire Emblem, battles feel faster paced in some respects, yet slower in others. There's less player downtime due to the unit turn based system, no waiting around for each enemy unit to take its turn, but the bland combat animations are unskippable and most maps are huge for no apparent reason, often requiring several turns to even reach the opposing army. So I still found myself waiting around a lot, only for a different reason. At least there's plenty of time to appreciate the richly detailed battle backgrounds, hmm. Beautiful. Unfortunately, enemy AI acts brain dead more often than not. They'll always attack Max when they can, and otherwise like to go for either your tankiest unit or a particularly vulnerable unit with no variation in strategy beyond that. If enemies can't do one of those things, they tend to run away, making it annoying to clear maps, which is almost always your mission goal. In some stages, you only need to kill one certain enemy, but it's not always clear when that's the case. Ah well, I like killing everything thing anyway for extra XP, in fact Shining Force seems designed around this. Max can use his escape spell Egress to travel back to town at any point during battle. It's his only spell, so this is always an option, and it effectively works as a way to redo fights without losing XP. That's a clever way to allow grinding in a fun way that contributes to progress, since you can figure out some tactics for a new map on the first go. I'd be willing to bet the devs of Triangle Strategy are Shining Force fans, it's got something similar. Not that you'll need to grind though, at least not much. Focus on making your best units stronger, promote early since this ain't a long game, and you'll do fine. 
What Shining Force lacks in deep gameplay, it makes up for in world building, which makes Fire Emblem 1 look like a joke in comparison. <laughs> you can explore each new town you reach in traditional RPG style, and while there's not too much to see and do, it's just enough to give Shining Force the fat around its strategic gameplay meat needed to feel like a complete experience, especially on the Genesis. In fact, journeys between towns play out in real time. There's no map screen, often with a battle along the way. That's an innovative feature, certainly my first time seeing it in a TRPG. The story may not deserve particular praise, but it's adequate medieval fantasy, with a notable sci-fi twist at the end, and is more impressive simply for existing and keeping the easy battles from getting monotonous. Sure, there's plenty of tough enemies, but overall, if you've got a plan, you'll have no problem getting through Shining Force. You play as the titular Shining Force, a scrappy group of recruits on a quest to stop the big bad from awakening the Dark Dragon, all with the help of a legendary blade. That sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> the first Fire Emblem game's Japanese title is literally translated to Dark Dragon and the Sword of Light, but we'll let it slide. Shining Force ups the amount of anthropomorphic races featuring a wolf, fox, hawks, even a strange jellyfish named Domingo, who's an absolute tank by the way, and there's the comic relief little beaver dude, Yogurt. Yeah, the game's going for that same sort of cozy Saturday morning cartoon vibe Shining in the Darkness achieved, which is all it takes to differentiate this franchise from others. The soundtrack easily surpasses Shining in the Darkness's, bringing plenty of earworms from Masahiko Yoshimura. Overall, I'd call the OSD just okay, though. While tracks make the most of that unique Genesis warmth, they fall on the short, simple, and repetitive side, leaning too much on their basic melodies. Camelot and Climax Entertainment left an impact on the TRPG genre with their first try in Shining Force, an impressive feat. I've heard nothing but great things about its sequel, so I'm eager to check out how Shining Force 2 improves on the systems SF1 lays down. Until then, thanks for watching. Leave a like for that algorithm, let me know what you thought of Shining Force in the comments, subscribe for more videos on RPGs, and have a blessed day.